Welcome to Banjo Quest. Today we are going to do my most requested tune. I get to hear from people all over the world, viewers all over the place, and the most requested tune for me to teach on YouTube is Cumberland Gap from the Sinful to Flirt album. That album is linked below if you haven't heard it yet. Do check it out. So we are going to be attacking this tune from multiple angles. Obviously, we're going to learn the tune together. I'm going to take you through the entire arrangement. We're going to look at different phrases and phrases in particular that I think can help you level up your own playing. You can take these phrases, loop them, and then apply them to other tunes you know, or in general, just improve some basic techniques on the instrument. You guys know me by now. You know that I like to look at these individual phrases and use them as loops for warm-ups or for drilling down and improving your own technique. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm also going to show you how I came up with the variations and how you might come up with variations for your own playing and make this tune yours. Now there is going to be a lot of supplemental material that will all be available for patrons over on Patreon, including tab of the entire tune and the phrases and some of the inspirational tunes that I took from this, I'm going to go back some historic recordings of Cumberland Gap that I think are important for any banjo player to know. I will be tabbing those out as well. They will be note for note tabs of some really important recordings of this tune. So do check that out. So today what we're going to do is we're going to start the process of learning Cumberland Gap. I have a particular phrase in mind to get us warmed up and thinking in terms of Cumberland Gap, and it's from Tommy Gerald's playing, and I call it the Tommy Gerald rumble, or we'll just call it the rumble. And it's a way to create a textural element on the banjo that doesn't just apply to Cumberland Gap. And the other added benefit is if you don't like this phrase, or if you think it's a little bit too much, or it doesn't fit the vibe you're going for in your own playing, it's exceptionally good at getting you to perform accurate, crisp hammer-ons. So let's dive into the Tommy Gerald rumble. So we are going to be in A, D, G, C, F tuning. That's Cumberland Gap, but we're capoed up to the key of F. A, D, G, C, F. I've created a virtual tuner for patrons over on Patreon. You can quickly play it, both an audio version and a video version. You can quickly play it and get into this tuning. This tuning is a little tricky to get into, especially for beginners because the intervals are a little bit harder to hear than some other tunings that are uh, more beginner friendly. So it helps to have a reference and that is available over at patreon.com. Let me play you the rumble, give you the bird's eye view, and then I'll dissect it for you. All right, so let me take this apart for you. I'm gonna play it at a variety of different tempos and then I'm going to show you what to watch out for and to listen for and to strive for with this technique. All right, so let's take this nice and slow. I'll play it for you slow and then I'll describe what's going on. So I'm doing these two back-to-back -back hammer-ons and there's a nice rolling triplet rhythm. One, two, three. Triplet. 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 So make sure that is present in your own playing. You really want this to be as crisp as possible in the beginning. Then I'll show you ways to shake it up later on. So as you climb, Avoid one really critical thing, and I see beginners make this mistake and not beginners make this mistake all the time. When they do this technique, they walk with their fingers on the board, and you don't wanna do that. When you're ascending the fretboard, you wanna leave your previous finger down. So I'm staying planted with my index finger. That creates a really stable platform for your hammer-ons. It can help you make them more crisp. It makes your movement very economical with your left hand. There's not sort of this walky walky motion where you're trying to time these muscles to be perfect. You don't have to worry about that. You stay planted. During the pattern. 
Now, one of the critical aspects of hammer-ons is that you're firing the hammer-on hand, your fretting hand, from the center, from the palm of your hand. Don't think of it as a finger move. I think too often people think of fretting techniques as coming from the very tips of their fingers. It's easy to make that mistake because your fingers are the parts, the tips of your fingers are the parts of your hand that are touching the strings. But a lot of that motion stems, I think, from the palm of the hand. So when, let me show you what I mean. When I'm snapping that shut, I'm really activating larger uh, the larger muscle groups in the palm of my hand. I can feel that, that the bend is happening sort of down here in the palm, not sort of up here in my fingers. So that can help you. Create that nice articulated crisp hammer on where you're really dropping that hammer from the middle of your hand versus the finger joints. All right, so now that we've got it slow, let's see this thing, how it sits at different tempos. And faster. Oh, can I do it faster? Now, it's easy to think of this as pure ornamentation, but I have a different understanding of it. I think of it as a textural element that's just below the surface. So if you listen to the recording on Sinful to Flirt, the recording of Cumberland Gap, it's it's lurking beneath. You'd miss it if you weren't paying attention to it, and I don't do it every time through. And it's it's a little bit more subtle than just thinking of it in terms of this raw, big sounding hammer-on technique. But in the beginning, you wanna treat it that way. You want that articulation. You wanna make sure those hammer-ons are really, really clear, sharp, and that you're following through into the instrument using the palm of your hand, the muscles in your hand, to fire that mousetrap shut on, on the fretboard. But once you get that down, your work is not done. You need to find a way to make it musical and subtle and how to you know fit it into the larger arrangement. So in the beginning, you're going to want to play it loud and proud and clear. And then later, you may want to switch things up, make it more textural, make it a little bit more subtle. You can even miss the downstroke preceding it and it becomes a really subtle, very subtle rumble underneath all the other goings on of the phrasing. So I will be teaching lots of different variations for this over on Patreon. I'm going to show a beginner way of doing this. So those of you who have just started playing the instrument can feel comfortable playing a very similar interval or a very similar phrase without the added difficulty of timing those double uh, hammer-ons. So that will be over on Patreon. Tab, of course, is available on Patreon. And the entire download of the tune for free is also available for patrons only. Go on over to Patreon, a lot going on there. It is sort of the hub of Banjo Quest Central, so I do hope you check it out. And I will see you next week on Banjo Quest for more Cumberland Gap. Hope you guys have a good week.